Xia Ling is a jobless bum facing the consequences of unemployment. Her life changes when she goes to give an interview at midnight only to enter a street filled with ghosts. She meets the ruler of that street and decides to become his girl for some bucks. However, before any of this, Xia Ling gets stopped in the middle of the crossing by a suspicious homeless-looking man who tells her how everyone has their own destiny. The times have modernized and even fortune tellers have business cards now so he hands her one which shows that his name is Gifu Santo. She throws away the card and says that no one can decide her future. She turns around and starts to walk away but gets hit by a motorcycle. The motorcycle guy tells her to pay up for the food that she ruined as it was a red light. He takes all the money without forgiving even a single yuan and advises her not to go crashing into things again. She calls him a hoarder and picks up her fallen resumes but doesn't notice the fortune teller's card between them. She goes to the job fair but doesn't get treated any better there either and no one seems to be interested in hiring her even though she has good qualifications. She goes back home and looks out the window like she is in a movie. She gets a message late at night for an interview and heads out immediately. She follows the directions written on the message and finds Rekshasa Street. With zero survival instincts, she heads into the suspicious-looking street and a barrier appears behind her but the dumb girl does not notice. After roaming for a while and not seeing a single person, she realizes that something is suspicious and suspects that it might be a shady business that is holding the interview so late in the night. She tries to go back home but does not where she is at and hits a samurai lookalike. The samurai lookalike tries to hit her but she evades and falls in front of a dozen more lookalikes. She realizes that she just messed up and tries to run away but she is not using Bolt. She gets caught and is about to face the angel of death but gets saved by the motorcycle dude and his mini version. The motorcycle dude faces off against the samurais in a low-budget fight scene and the mini version asks the girl how she entered the gate of hell. The girl doesn't have any idea what he's talking about so he explains that this place is a requiem street, a place that holds the spirits of the dead and connects the ghostdom with the human world. He adds that each requiem street has a guarding requiem general and his older brother, Kao Yanbing is the requiem general of the Rakshasa street. Yanbing and Zia Ling argue again as he asks her to give him the money for the motorcycle repairs too and tells her to stop causing trouble for him. A talking ghost appears and declares that he will be taking over the Rakshasa street. The mini version, Xu and Liang and Yambing laugh at the dude and Yambing reveals that the Requiem generals are chosen by the ghost. He adds that Rakshasa Street is the most dangerous Requiem Street with the most ghosts and mocks the talking ghost. The battle it out and Yambing bashes him into the side but he isn't phased as he jumps forward again. They are evenly matched but the ghost hits Yambing away and jumps on him. Yambing hits his weapon on the ground and a flame dome appears around him which breaks the ghost's weapon. Yambing uses his weapon again to shoot flames this time but a snake appears from the flames which sends Yambing into the sky. The snake, which turns out to be the ghost's arm tries to hit Yambing but he grabs it and swings the ghost into the building. The snake comes out of the ground and the ghost hits Yambing from above. He kicks Yambing into the building and uses the snakes to bash him through the floor. The ghost enjoy his victory but Yanbing gets up again and explains that the Requiem generals are spirit hosts that have a guardian spirits. He summons his guardian spirit, Zhu Chu that kills most of the ghosts in one blow. The rest of the ghosts surrender after seeing their boss getting bashed like a mosquito. Little Yanbing hears a baby crying and rushes into the house. He overhears his father, General Kao, saying the baby has no psychic powers, which means the baby might live a normal life. Yambing touches the baby, amazed by his tiny size. His father tells him to protect the baby like a big brother, just as he protects Rakshasa Street from evil spirits. Later, Yambing's parents leave due to an emergency, leaving him alone with baby Xu and Liang. Yambing takes care of him as days pass, but their parents don't return. Running out of baby food, Yambing reassures Xu and Liang that their parents will come back soon. One day, Santong arrives with a man named General Lu, who throws Yambing to the ground, claiming to be the new general. Lu orders his guardian spirit, Yan King, to throw Yanbing down a hill. Yan King discovers Yanbing has psychic powers and tells Lu, who then orders him to throw Xu and Liang away since mortals without psychic powers aren't allowed in the street. Locked in the house, Yanbing escapes and rescues Xu and Liang with the power of light. Despite Lu's threats, Yanbing jumps into the human world, vowing to always protect Xu and Liang. Xia Ling wakes up and realizes she's in Requiem Street, a place between the human world and ghost. Yanbing explains that if she crosses the border, he'll have to erase her memories. He teases her, making her throw her bag and scatter papers. Xu and Liang finds a poster from Gifu Santong. When Xia Ling shows them a message she followed, Xu and Liang says only someone with strong powers can read it, but Yanbing can't detect any powers from her. Yanbing takes Xia Ling on his motorcycle to the human world. He explains that Requiem Street is full of spirits needing salvation, and if they wait too long, they turn evil. There are many Requiem Streets with separate entries. Xia Ling asks about Su Chu, and Yanbing summons him. 
He explains that ghostdom has three levels and a spirit host must be powerful to become a general. They encounter evil spirits, and Yanbing rushes through them. Zhu Chu crushes the spirits, and they soon reach the human world. Yanbing tells Zi Ling she's a spirit host with a guardian spirit but warns her not to return to Requiem Street. Before leaving, he announces that Rakshasa Street is his turf. Back in the past, Yanbing steals food from a shop and goes to his shelter which is under the bridge in the Rakshasa Street of Human World. As Yanbing feeds baby Xu and Liang, the shopkeeper from where he stole the food comes to him. Yanbing kicks him in the family jewels and starts to run away but the shopkeeper called Ata urges him to stop showing him the food that he bought with him. Yanbing eats the food and tells Ata about his parents. Ata tells him that he know a place which can give the brothers food and shelter and when Yanbing refuses to go, Ata tells him to come find him if he ever changes his mind. Days pass as Yanbing steals food and stays in front of the Rakshasa Street entry. He gets chased away from his spot and has to protect himself from some dogs as well. As winter arrives, Xu and Liang get sick and Yanbing takes him to the doctor. The doctor tells him that Xu and Liang has a fever imparting such wisdom on him and also tells him to bring his parents to pay the bill. Yanbing gets fed up finally and goes to Ata to avail his offer. Ata takes him to a home where Yanbing gets cleaned and gets served food. When he inquires about Xu and Liang, he gets no proper reply so he sneaks around to find him. He comes across Ata taking money from a fat-looking glob who tells Ata that he will only give him half the money since the sick kid is useless and should be thrown away. Ata spots Yanbing and tells him that he has been sold. He soon gets restrained and another fat female glob beats him. He continually asks about Xu and Liang and nobody tells him anything. He refuses to obey them so they beat him into a pulp again. Xu and Liang is thrown into the garbage on a snowy night. His kidnapper tells Yanbing that if he obeys, he can have new parents and toys. Remembering his father's words about protecting his family, Xu and Liang becomes furious. The light suddenly goes off and Yanbing starts to get filled with energy. He breaks the ropes and the power of guardian spirit starts to rush into him. Looking like a super saiyan, he tells his kidnappers that he will protect his brother. He beats them and rushes out. Outside he finds Ata counting money like a sly fox. With the spirit guardian power still with him, he threatens Ata who tells him where Xu and Liang he then takes Xu and Liang to the doctor and pays him money to treat Xu and Liang. As Xu and Liang gets treated, Yan Bing's spirit guardian appears once again who introduces himself as Yu Jin. Yan Bing then declares that he will never be apart from Xu and Liang. Xia Ling thinks about Yan Bing's words and tries to summon her guardian spirit but fails. Deciding to ask Yan Bing for help, she heads to Rakshasa Street but remembers his warning and goes back home, convincing herself she's just a normal girl. The next day, she lands a job and returns home excitedly, throwing away an old card without thinking. A robot detects psychic power and attacks her. Gifu Santong appears, destroys the robot, and tells her she has bad luck. The robot's controller sends more robots. Santong explains that the kingdom organization is after her guardian spirit. Angry and scared, she runs to Rakshasa Street as Santong fights off the robots. She gets hit by a truck and sits by the road, waiting for Santong. She tells him her guardian spirit appeared while the controller watching laughs. In the past, a bruised man lies to the police, saying a kid attacked him while he was helping another child. In reality, he bullied a kid until Xu and Liang and Yanbing arrived, with Yanbing summoning Yu Jin to beat him up. Yanbing sings a lullaby to Xu and Liang, promising to take him to Rakshasa Street using his powers. They hope their parents have returned there. Four years later, they enter Rakshasa Street, and Xu and Liang accidentally provokes an evil spirit. Yu Jin and Yanbing defeat it, drawing attention. General Lu hears about them and orders a search, causing stress among other spirits, trying to leave Rakshasa Street. They are attacked by another spirit in General Lu. Yan King defeats Yu Jin, and General Lu offers a deal, but Yanbing refuses. General Lu reveals a wanted man named Hyunfu, accused of killing Yanbing's parents. General Lu takes Yanbing to Santong, who dismisses Xu and Liang's lack of psychic powers. Xu and Liang wakes up in a strange place and meets a girl previously attacked by an evil spirit. Back to the present, Santong brings Zia Ling to Yanbing's house in the Rakshasa Street and says that it is the safest place for her currently. Xu and Liang greets them and brings them inside. He serves them tea and informs them that Yanbing is currently out doing deliveries to make money because it looks like inflation has hard on the ghostum too. Zia Ling tells him that he is a good kid unlike his brother and he appears from behind. He tells her not to badmouth him while drinking his tea and scolds her for coming back even though he warned her not to. She says that she didn't want to and that Santong brought her here. Xu and Liang tells her about the sacred pagoda tree and how the tablets represent their family members. Meanwhile, Santong tries to convince Yanbing to train her because he thinks that Yanbing would be the best choice. He reveals that he guided her to the Rakshasa street from the start and Yanbing says that he kicked her out then. 
He suggests sending her to the Death Valley but Santong reminds him about their rules. Yanbing agrees that they wouldn't accept an old lady like her and this annoys Xie Ling. He tells her that she is over 18 and they won't accept her but she argues that in modern times, people focus on the state of mind rather than age. He taunts her that her mental age is less than a 5 year olds and she loses her temper. Santong calms them both down and requests Yanbing to let her stay for a while even if he doesn't want to train her. He informs them that the kingdom organization is after her and says that the increase in the evil spirits in the Rakshasa street is also because of them. He adds that the constables are yet to discover the identities of the kingdom organization and the reason why they are doing such things but they're not up to any good. Yanbing says that it's his none of his business and reminds Santong the reason why he became a requiem general. Hanbing says that he doesn't give a crap about what happens to the ghost and Santong tells him to at least pretend like he is doing the job. Hanbing proves that he is a chad and says that he is not taking her in because she is old and useless and will only cause her trouble. He says that he is not a nanny and Zealing says that she can do housework so why would she need a nanny? Hanbing liked what she said and says that he was in a need for a maid anyways. Thus began Zealing's life of getting work to the bone by Yanbing. Xu and Liang asks him why he is overworking her and Yanbing says that he has a better plan. Zia Ling enters the room and he hands her the keys to his bike. He tells her that she will be making the deliveries in his place starting from tomorrow. This makes her furious and Chu and Liang reminds Yanbing that she can't leave the street because of the kingdom organization. Yanbing taunts her for working poorly and eating a lot which makes her lose her temper. She says that she would rather pay rent than bear such injustice. Yanbing turns into a con artist and tells her that the rent is a 100 yuan. Little did he know that she is rich compared to his standards so she takes out 200 and gets a maid along with the house. Thus began Yanbing's life as a slave. After some time, Xu and Liang finally asks the million dollar question of why the kingdom organization is after her. Santong informs them that the kingdom organization is after something owned by her guardian spirit, the elixir of reviving which can bring back the dead. He tells Yanbing that he can get the elixir if she can summon her guardian spirit that is why he should train her. She wakes up the next morning and Yanbing tells her that it's time for her training to start. In the past, Hanbing begins training on Death Island, where spirit hosts strengthen themselves and their guardian spirits. New students, including Yanbing, are introduced by Santong. Other kids tease them, predicting they'll cry. A teacher explains that students must train until they're 18 or have their memories erased if they don't reach the required level. Yanbing attempts to escape by jumping into the sea, but the teacher fishes him out. Later, he is bullied and tries to summon Yu Jin, but fails due to the spirit suppressing stones on the island. Liu Yushin arrives, scares off the bullies with his three guardian spirits, and offers to help Yanbing escape. Meanwhile, in Rakshasa Street, a mute girl hides with Xu and Liang from roaming evil spirits. Xu and Liang reassures her that he will protect her. Yushin leads Yanbing to a high point on the island, explaining a theory that if Yanbing jumps from a high enough point, he'll reach the bottom of the sea and emerge in the real world. Yanbing, determined to reunite with Xu and Liang, jumps. He struggles but finds an opening and swims through, emerging in the real world sea. The authorities try to keep this escape a secret, as it's the first time someone has ever escaped Death Island. In the present, Anbing trains Zia Ling to improve her abilities as a spirit host. Despite her complaints about gender differences in lung capacity, Anbing emphasizes that belief in oneself is crucial. He guides her through various rigorous exercises, citing a comic book as their training guide. Zia Ling questions the effectiveness but continues under Xu and Liang's encouragement. Santong interrupts, revealing a hunt for a criminal named Huang Fu Longdu. Zia Ling doubts its truth, but Yanbing insists they stay focused. Their training intensifies, and Zia Ling eventually achieves her goal of holding her breath for three minutes, spurred on by Xu and Liang's words about self-belief. Now, Yanbing prepares Zia Ling for summoning her guardian spirit, marking a significant step in her journey on Requiem Street. In the past on Rakshasa Street, chaos ensues as residents are treated harshly and threatened with transformation into evil spirits. General Lu organizes death matches to assert dominance, but Yan King swiftly deals with traitors. Lu emphasizes survival of the fittest, capturing more residents as despair spreads. Xu and Liang hides from Lu's forces with the help of a friend, avoiding detection. An old man warns them of the danger of being found, fearing Xu and Liang's friend will succumb to despair. Xu and Liang defends her innocence, believing she won't turn evil. Meanwhile, Lu intensifies the search for Xu and Liang, dismissing Yan King's doubts about the boy's survival skills. Lu suspects external help aiding Xu and Liang, unaware his own brother has escaped Death Island and is racing back to Rakshasa Street. Yanbing returns to the street, cautioned by Yu Jin about the dangers of recapture. Meanwhile, Lu's soldiers close in on Xu and Liang and his friend. They mock Xu and Liang's attempts to summon his guardian spirit, prompting Yanbing's timely intervention. Yanbing's unexpected arrival surprises everyone, especially since escaping Death Island is unheard of. 
Shu and Liang breaks down in relief, sharing how he bravely protected his friend all this time. Yanbing recognizes the mute girl as their benefactor and thanks her. However, it's too late for the girl, who begins transforming into an evil spirit despite Shu and Liang's efforts to reassure her. Zia Ling tries to communicate with her guardian spirit but it scares her away. Shu and Liang asks her what happened and she says that her guardian spirit felt like he was angry with her. He says that it is not possible because guardian spirits only show themselves to protect their host and she assumes that she must have done something to make it angry. She says that she will just yambing about it and asks Xu and Liang why yambing has been disappearing so much lately. He tells her that he is out trying to find about the wanted criminal that disappeared 10 years ago. Meanwhile, the ghost rider asks another requiem general about the criminal and the guy tells him not to interfere in the ghostum's business. Yambing tells the guy to inform him through psychic message if he hears anything about the criminal. Yambing continues to ask around but doesn't find out anything. The mysterious guy should change his profession to a stalker as he watches Yanbing through one of the robots and laughs at him for being so careless. Yanbing disappears all of a sudden and reappears behind the robot like a ninja. Meanwhile, Zia Ling gets worried that something bad is going on and points out that this could be a part of their evil plot so they can attack Rekshasa Street during Yanbing's absence. Xu and Liang brags that he will take care of things but she humbles him by saying that he is an ordinary human who doesn't have a guardian spirit. He tries to tell her something but senses something coming towards them. Santong seems to also have taken ninja classes and appears from behind Yanbing. Yanbing questions why Santong is following an assassin of the kingdom organization instead of trying to find Huang Fu Longdu. Santong replies that he doesn't have any clue about Huang Fu's location and points out that Yanbing is looking harder than him. Yanbing says that Huang Fu killed his parents but Santong reminds him that he only heard it from the constables and hasn't seen it for himself. Santong does some geeky crap on the laptop and connects with the robot. They talk with the person behind the screens and he laughs at them for leaving Zia Ling alone. Yanbing says that no person can enter the street without informing him and says that he didn't send a person. Back at the Rakshasa street, a giant mount spider attacks them and Xu and Liang tells Zia Ling to hide inside the house. He tries to fight back against the spider and brags that anything can be cut by his blades of thunder but his five minutes of fame are short-lived as the spider slaps him away. The guy behind the screens rejoices at his victory but Yanbing is still calm and says that such moments can awaken people. The guy tells him that this isn't enough for Zia Ling to awaken but psych that's the wrong number as Yanbing says that he never met Zia Ling. Xu and Liang gets up and does a special move to summon a guardian spirit called Tang Yu. They cut the spider's arm and the spirit punches it on the face. The spider shoots out more mini spiders and Xu and Liang performs high strongest move. Pair flowers in the storm. The name could have been shorter but nonetheless. He bombs all the spiders in the area. Zia Ling is shocked and wonders how he can summon a guardian spirit without being a spirit host. Switching back to the past, Xu and Liang's friend tragically transforms into an evil spirit. Yanbing urgently calls for Yu Jin's intervention. But Xu and Liang, in denial, protests fiercely against Yu Jin's actions. As Yanbing confirms her transformation, Xu and Liang breaks down, pleading for her release, citing her loyalty and care during his troubled times. Yanbing, conflicted by Xu and Liang's persistence, debates the decision. Yu Jin explains the irreversible nature of evil spirit transformation, but Xu and Liang's unwavering plea convinces Yanbing to command Yu Jin to release her. Freed momentarily, she remembers Xu and Liang before attacking him, prompting Yan Bing and Yu Jin to subdue her. Despite Yan Bing's apology and promise to protect Xu and Liang, the situation escalates, leading to Yan Bing ordering Yu Jin to end her suffering, leaving Xu and Liang devastated by the loss of his friend. Yan Bing reflects on kindness being perceived as a weakness in Rakshasa Street. Meanwhile, General Lu remains unconcerned in his castle, determined to capture the brothers to teach them a harsh lesson. His guardian sets out to apprehend them, but Xu and Liang and Yanbing bury their friend, naming her Xiao Ru. Xu and Liang blames Yanbing and rejects his brother, expressing hatred towards spirits and his situation. Despite not being a spirit host with a guardian spirit, Xu and Liang vows to surpass Yanbing in power and seek revenge against him. Yanbing accepts his decision, acknowledging Ru's kindness as her vulnerability. Determined to cleanse their sins, Yanbing proposes they train together to become stronger. General Lu's guardian reports their escape, reassuring Lu that they won't return. In the outside world, the brothers resolve to grow stronger and eventually reclaim Rakshasa Street, setting their sights on a powerful comeback. In the present timeline, Tang Liuyu is revealed to be a powerful mecha controlled by a rune with psychic powers, not a guardian spirit. Zia Ling is impressed by his strength and wonders when she will be able to summon her own guardian spirit. She suggests getting a mecha to avoid the rigorous training required for spirit summoning but she's interrupted by two ninjas who emphasize the importance of summoning her guardian spirit. 
Santong explains that summoning a guardian spirit signifies an agreement with them and prevents others, like the kingdom organization, from stealing it. Zia Ling complains that her guardian spirit scares her and never responds. Anbing intervenes, criticizing her lack of effort and warning about the weakening barrier that allowed enemies like the spider in. The top 10 knight of the kingdom organization plans to infiltrate personally next time. Anbing relentlessly makes Zia Ling practice summoning gestures, irritating her further. Santong offers wisdom while watching their argument. Xu and Long questions Santong's intentions about his past mistakes, but Santong focuses only on the present. Anbing decides to try another approach and summons Zhu Chu to forcibly bring Zia Ling to a dangerous area of Rakshasa Street filled with evil spirits. He leaves her there, prompting her guardian spirit to intervene as she struggles against the spirits. Despite her efforts, she fails and is saved dramatically by the brothers and Santong. They explain that Zia Ling needs to unlock the heart chain herself, without her guardian spirit's direct help, which may take a long time of dedicated effort. Back in the past, Yang King expresses concern that he and General Lu haven't trained in a while, but Lu dismisses it, preferring to enjoy his status as a requiem general and party. Meanwhile, in town, soldiers harass the old man who betrayed Chu and Liang, trying to force him to transform into an evil spirit for entertainment. Unexpectedly, Yanbing makes a dramatic return to Rakshasa Street, defeating soldiers who attempt to control the town. He declares himself as the true master of Rakshasa Street, challenging General Lu's authority. Furious, Lu tries to capture Yanbing but fails. Yanbing defeats all of Lu's soldiers, and when Lu summons Yang King, Xu and Liang arrives, revealing his identity as the true heir. Xu and Liang showcases his growth by effortlessly handling spirits, impressing everyone including Yan King. Yanbing rejects Lu's authority and demands he leave Rakshasa Street. During the fight, Xu and Liang checks on Ru's grave, vowing to become stronger until he commands fear from everyone. After their defeat, General Lu is told to leave Rakshasa Street forever. Yang King acknowledges the brothers' hard training, but laments their lack of understanding about Rakshasa Street's true value. The brothers return to their ancestral home, finding their family tree withered but their names still there, overshadowed by a new, unappealing house built atop it. Lu returns, challenging them again, fueled by his desire to control the sacred pagoda tree of Rakshasa Street. He reveals the tree's ability to enhance psychic powers when consumed by a spirit host. Lu consumes its bark, becoming stronger, and orders Yan King to attack with their enhanced power. Realizing the danger, Anbing decides they must leave immediately to protect Rakshasa Street from Lu's ambitions. In the present time, Santong suggests that Zio Ling could potentially gain significant power by consuming a branch from the sacred pagoda tree. However, Yanbing adamantly opposes this idea, insisting that Zio Ling should focus on unlocking her abilities naturally through training. Overhearing their conversation, Zia Ling inquires about the sacred pagoda tree and its significance. Yanbing explains that the tree's branches hold potent magical properties capable of enhancing psychic powers, but he warns of the dangers associated with artificially gaining such abilities. Feeling hurt by Yanbing's dismissal of her efforts, Zia Ling defends herself, unintentionally causing Xu and Liang to feel caught in the middle of their argument. Later, Xu and Liang advises Yanbing to let go of the past. But Yanming remains steadfast in his belief that consuming the tree's branch could lead to destruction, showing clear distrust towards Zia Ling's readiness to handle such power. Distraught by their conflict, Zia Ling retreats to a cliffside for solitude. Santong finds her there and offers comforting words, encouraging her to make decisions independently and reminding her that every choice carries risks. Determined to prove herself, Zia Ling decides to climb the sacred pagoda tree. As she ascends, she reflects on recent events and her struggles to summon her guardian spirit. Reaching the top, Zia Ling contemplates taking a branch of the tree but ultimately decides against it, realizing that true strength must come from within and cannot be rushed or borrowed. Meanwhile, Yanbing, Xu and Liang, and Santong sense trouble brewing and rush outside. At the border of Rakshasa Street, they encounter a high-ranking agent from the kingdom organization. In the past, Yanbing confronts General Lu over the reckless use of the pagoda tree's power. Lu scoffs at Yanbing's ideals of fairness and orders Yan King to attack. Amidst the battle, Xu and Liang arrives unexpectedly, kicking Lu aside and rescuing Yanbing with Yu Jin's assistance. Xu and Liang insists on facing Yanbing alone, refusing external aid. Unharmed, Lu commands Yan King to eliminate the brothers while enhancing evil spirits with branches from the pagoda tree. The trio, Yanbing, Xu and Liang, and Yu Jin, rush towards the gateway to the human world to evade pursuing spirits. They encounter an evil spirit empowered by the tree's branch, whom Yu Jin defeats. Meanwhile, other spirits become increasingly aggressive due to the branch's influence. Yanbing urges Xu and Liang to flee with him, but Xu and Liang adamantly refuses, pledging to safeguard Rakshasa Street single-handedly. 
Their heated argument escalates, with Xu and Liang denying their brotherhood and insisting on protecting the spirits alone. In a decisive moment, Yanming slaps Xu and Liang, then carries him to the gateway and forcibly sends him through to the human world. As Xu and Liang disappears, fulfilling his duty to protect Rakshasa Street, Yanming stands firm with Yu Jin, resolved to reclaim the street from Lu's control once and for all. Amidst the chaos caused by the robots, the group ponders how the kingdom organization breached Rekshasa Street's barriers. Santong explains they likely exploited a weakness from a neighboring Requiem Street. Zhu Chu instructs Xu and Liang to protect Zia Ling while he handles the robots effortlessly, noting the presence of General Zuo Chong's barrier in the sky and questioning his absence. Yanbing directs Zhu Chu to manage another emerging barrier, prompting Zia Ling's concern over his well-being. Xu and Liang reassures her, confident in Yanbing's abilities despite successive barriers appearing. True to Xu and Liang's prediction, the next barrier materializes to the north, where he swiftly eliminates the robot threat preemptively. Feeling inadequate despite her guardian spirit, Zia Ling expresses her reliance on others for protection, a sentiment Yanbing bluntly agrees with, continuing his teasing. Santong interjects, reminding them of the ongoing threat from the barriers and the suspicion surrounding the absent Requiem generals. Santong investigates one of the barriers and returns with alarming news. Four pillars of light converge above the cliff, culminating in a monstrous entity's emergence. Hanming shields Zia Ling as the situation intensifies, prompting a rare moment of shyness from her and astonishment from Xu and Liang at the unfolding event. Zhu Chu warns Yanbing about the monster's formidable psychic powers, setting the stage for a daunting confrontation. In the human world, Xu and Liang's repeated attempts to enter Rakshasa Street prove futile as the barrier remains impassable. Back in Rakshasa Street, Yanbing and Yu Jin find themselves surrounded and outnumbered by evil spirits. Despite the onslaught, Yanbing is relieved that Xu and Liang is safe from harm. Meanwhile, Xu and Liang's frustration mounts as he questions why he lacks psychic powers. His lamentations are interrupted when evil spirits, sent by General Lu, attack him in the human world. Struggling to see them clearly, Xu and Liang improvises by breaking open a fire hydrant, using the water to reveal the spirit's forms. Despite his efforts, the spirits overwhelm him, fueled by the power of the pagoda branch they consume. In Rakshasa Street, General Lu interrogates Yanbing about Xu and Liang's whereabouts, resorting to violence when Yanbing remains silent. Yang King interjects, questioning the necessity of their relentless pursuit of the brothers. He argues they have suffered enough, but General Lu, embittered by his past, refuses to relent. Just then, an unexpected arrival interrupts their discussion, an evil spirit reports that Xu and Liang has not only evaded capture, but has also infiltrated Rakshasa Street using the body of a defeated spirit. Xu and Liang enters defiantly, challenging a battered Yanbing not to succumb until he personally defeats him. Back in the present for the 50th time, Xia Ling questions if the border works or not as it lets such a big monster in and Yanbing says that breaking the border is not that difficult. Xu and Liang adds that the monster is very strong so it should be even easier for it and Xia Ling is confused why they are complimenting the enemy. Yanbing speculates that the monsters might be strong but they are very dumb and unable to break the border so there must be a mastermind helping them break in. Some blue ghosts observe the whole situation through a mirror and they discuss how the borders of the Requiem streets have been very chaotic lately. One of the blue ghosts talks about how all the intruders are heading towards the Rakshasa street and says that the kingdom organization seems to be in a hurry. Meanwhile, the monster wreaks havoc in the street and a small girl hides from him. Yanbing saves the girl and gets shocked after seeing her face. He tells her to go hide and Zia Ling talks about how she used to think that Yanbing only cared for his turf but it turns out that he cares a lot about the spirits living in Rakshasa street. Xu and Lang tells her that Yanbing has been protecting the street his entire life but has never admitted that he wants to protect the people because he is too cool for such things. Xu and Liang says that Yanbing just doesn't know how to express himself and side by side the spirits are turning evil due to the destruction. Yanbing opens up another barrier and lures the monster into it so he can prevent any further damage to the street. Xu and Liang senses a something coming to them and defends against it. Meanwhile, Yanbing faces off against the monster in a barren space and the punk dude appears in front of Zia Ling and Xu and Liang. He introduces himself after half the anime has gone by and says that he is the immediate executive officer of the kingdom organization, the Ninth Knight, Hail Camp. He taunts them for having a spirit host with zero psychic powers and Zia Ling immediately realizes that he is a bad guy which might not have been very obvious from his face or his long introduction. Xu and Liang tells him to mind his own business and to state the reason why he came here. Hale says that he wants Zia Ling and he had to break through five different Requiem streets just to meet her that's why the ladies have such high standards in men. Zia Ling tells him to tell them about him and he says that the assassin robots he sent to her home should have told her about him. She says that only tried to capture her and rants about how much it affected her mental health. 
She questions his audacity to come see her after ruining her life and he corrects her by saying that he came to capture her and not see her. Xu and Liang throws a kunai at him and claims that he won't let him touch Xia Ling in an inch of this land. Hale mocks him for being a small kid with a big mouth and says that Requiem generals aren't a big deal as he just dealt with a few. He says that the Requiem general of the Chilean street, Zuo Chong was so weak that he didn't even feel like killing him. The Blue Ghosts talk about how they finally know the purpose of the kingdom organization and one of them sighs that it's related to the Cao family again. He suggests leaving it to Santong again like last time and another ghost reminds him that they haven't heard from Santong in three months. They suspect that he might be planning something as he hasn't reported anything even though so much has happened and one says that he will be killed immediately if he tries to betray them. Meanwhile, Santong meets the heavily injured Zuo Chong who tells him to inform the ghostdom about the kingdom organization's plans and request for backup. Santong tells him that he has something else to do and turns away. Zuo Chong calls his name and requests him for help and Santong asks him if he said his name. On the other side, Yanming faces off against the monster and Zhu Chu takes the brunt of the monster's attacks. Xu and Liang summons Tang Liu and Hale says that Tang Liu you can only use his special move once so it will be easier for him now. He proclaims that they are entering an era in which the ghostdom will be ruled by the kingdom organization. In the past, General Cao proudly shows his wife two tablets inscribed with Yanbing and Chu and Liang's names, expressing hope that they will protect Rekshasa Street in the future. Meanwhile, at General Lu's place, Xu and Liang urges Yanbing to stop pretending and rise. They engage in combat against General Lu, with Xu and Liang fiercely trying to land blows. But General Lu effortlessly knocks him away, dismissing mortal fights as uninteresting due to their weakness. Despite the setbacks, Xu and Liang gets back on his feet, prompting Yin Bang to scold him for returning after being banished to the human world. Tensions escalate as the brothers confront General Lu together, managing to land a collective strike. Xu and Liang taunts General Lu about the insignificance of the pagoda branch's power if it fails against a child like him. Infuriated, General Lu retaliates, sending Yin Bang flying and striking Xu and Liang. Undeterred, Xu and Liang continues his verbal assault condemning spirit hosts for relying solely on their guardian spirits, which he believes makes them weaker than humans. Enraged by Xu and Liang's defiance, General Lu seizes him and uses psychic powers to erase his memories of Yanbing, an unprecedented success for General Lu. Upon awakening, Xu and Liang fails to recognize Yanbing, with General Lu manipulating him into viewing Yanbing as an enemy who must be killed. Yanbing attempts to reason with Xu and Liang, but his efforts are futile as Xu and Liang attacks relentlessly. Yanbing dodges every strike, while Yu Jin attempts to intervene but is thwarted by Yan King. As the conflict escalates, General Lu orders Yan King to eliminate Yu Jin, leading to a desperate confrontation where Yu Jin declares his allegiance to the Cao lineage, despite Yan King's attempts to deter him. Amidst the chaos, Xu and Liang continues to assault Yanbing, while Yan King targets Yu Jin with arrows, eventually landing a fatal blow just as Xu and Liang prepares to strike Yanbing. In a moment of hesitation, Xu and Liang stops short of delivering the fatal blow, torn between his emotions and General Lu's manipulations. Tearfully, he confronts Yanbing, asking who he truly is amidst the turmoil and betrayal. In the present time, Yanbing and Zhu Chu's attacks prove ineffective against the formidable monster, which remains impervious despite their efforts from different angles. Meanwhile, Xu and Liang struggles in his fight against Hale, regretting his earlier bravado. He directs Zia Ling to seek cover behind the sacred tree, advising that it's the only way she can assist him. Hale taunts Xu and Liang for his bluff and swiftly evades his kunai throw, appearing behind him as is customary in the anime style. Yanbing and Zhu Chu manage to break one of the monster's teeth, noticing it hasn't opened its eyes but seems to detect their movements through hearing and smell. Yanbing deduces that the monster relies on its acute senses and brought it to this edge of the Requiem Street, where broken spaces hinder its ability to track them. Taking advantage, Yanbing rides the monster through different spaces like a cowboy, confusing and disorienting it. Despite their efforts, the monster returns to a barren area where its wounds begin to heal, revealing itself as a guardian spirit capable of self-healing through psychic powers. They realize they must defeat the spirit host to defeat the monster permanently. Meanwhile, Tang Liu collapses, and Xu and Liang, still in close combat with Hale, urges Zi Ling to eat the sacred pagoda branch. He emphasizes its importance for summoning her guardian spirit and potentially turning the tide against Hale. She breaks off a piece of bark and consumes it, triggering her awakening. Zia Ling successfully summons her guardian spirit, but something goes awry as it unleashes a celestial-natured beam towards the sacred tree, endangering it. Before they can comprehend the situation, a projectile strikes her guardian spirit, causing it to turn towards and attack the sacred tree, devastating it with blasts from its mouth. 
The destruction of the sacred tree creates a white pillar of light that begins to suck in the spirits from Rakshasa's tree. Santong observes from afar, realizing the gravity of the situation. Hale explains that the pagoda tree acted as a barrier between the ghostum and the requiem streets, and its destruction now directly pulls spirits into the ghostum. Back in the past, before their entry into Rakshasa Street and before Chuan Liang's rebellious phase, Yu Jin and Chuan Liang sit together. Chuan Liang curiously asks about the box in front of them, and Yu Jin solemnly reveals its contents. At General Lu's stronghold, An Bing earnestly declares to Chuan Liang that they are brothers. Confused and adamant, Chuan Liang denies any recollection of having a brother, professing his hatred but unable to bring himself to harm Yan Bing. A display of his typical brash demeanor. Yanbing patiently recounts their shared memories, from building their humble abode under the bridge to growing up together and eventually finding themselves in Rakshasa Street. His words begin to penetrate Xuan Liang's confusion, and he tentatively reaches out to grasp Yanbing's hand. Suddenly, General Liu intervenes, forcibly guiding Xuan Liang's hand, which still holds a knife towards Yanbing. The blade pierces Yanbing and he collapses into Xuan Liang's arms. Despite Yu Jin's struggle, Yan King advises him not to intervene, recognizing that his powers are waning with his master's demise. He implores Yan Bing not to die and leave him alone in the darkness of his empty memories. Finally, his memories of Yan Bing flood back. His sorrow unleashes a psychic storm, startling even General Liu, who attempts to strike him but is repelled by lightning from the storm. Unleashing his latent psychic powers, Xuan Liang emanates a surge of energy. Yu Jin, now aware of Xuan Liang's unique condition, the warrior body that can host multiple guardian spirits, reveals that this might have been why Xuan Liang had no powers earlier in life. He then retrieves the sealed box and opens it with his remaining psychic strength. From within emerges a sealed staff, and Yu Jin uses his last reserves of power to break the seal. Guardian spirits burst forth, their energies spreading throughout the area. The spirits identify Xuan Liang as a potential inheritor of the Chancellor's will, acknowledging his mortal youth but seeing in him the promise to shape the future. Among the spirits, Zhu Chu steps forward, pledging to carry Yu Jin's will as his own fades away. The spirits deliberate, some expressing skepticism about Xuan Liang's ability to properly inherit the Chancellor's will. Ultimately, they all converge into Xuan Liang's body alongside Zhu Chu, standing over Yanbing's lifeless form. Xuan Liang summons his guardian spirit, Zhu Chu, and together they stride toward General Lu. As General Lu protests the unfairness of the situation, Yan King moves to intervene, but Zhu Chu halts him effortlessly. In a moment of satisfaction and justice, Xuan Liang delivers a powerful punch to General Lu's face. Back to the present, the constables watch on as chaos spreads. They determine that the destruction of the sacred pagoda tree shall bring utter chaos to the ghost. Spirits continue to be sucked into the portal and Chuan Liang apologizes to Zia Ling for not revealing his secret to her sooner. Turns out, he had been a spirit all along. Zia says it doesn't matter and grabs him just as he almost gets sucked into the tree. She promises to help him from being taken away so that Yanbing can come save the day like he always does. Yanbing might not make it this time as he has his hands full with the regenerating beast. He prepares and fires a powerful attack from his cannon, but the creature suddenly disappears on him. Yanbing thinks that space has become twisted, so the borders between realms start to become distorted. Xu and Liang holds onto Zia, and Zia's guardian continues on his rampage. Zia begins to lose her grip and Hale trips her into stumbling. Just then, Yanbing is transported to a place where he finds Santong's dead body. His scrolls explain that he was ambushed and that the kingdom organization is not the only secret force threatening the world. Yanbing rushes into another portal and Zia continues to hold on to Xu and Liang with all her might. She refuses to let him go but Hale forces her to release him. Yanbing returns right back on time and saves Xu and Liang from being sucked into the portal. He then holds his brother tightly and promises to never let him die again. Hale interrupts that the fight isn't over and Xu and Liang explains how Zia had no other choice but to eat the pagoda tree's bark. Yanbing isn't interested in hearing her apology and approaches Hale as he explains that he will not take his threats lightly. When he combines with his spirit beast, Yanbing isn't very impressed and the two begin to fight. Zhu Chu is instructed to hold out the rampaging guardian. Hale proves his worth and lands an impressive blow on Yanbing. However, the dust clears and everyone is shocked to see Yanbing's hidden weapon. Yanbing finally reveals his second guardian and Hale realizes that he must be the legendary warrior body. However, Yanbing explains that he only summoned him to help Zhu Chu. Hale is eventually forced to separate from his guardian. Yanbing reveals that he has seven guardians, and Hale wets his pants. He realizes he is far outmatched and makes a run for it. Yanbing decides to let him go since he need to deal with the rampaging guardian. However, in this dire moment, Yanbing is surprised to see that the man pretending to be Santong has arrived with help. 
portal and finally puts an end to the chaos. Before Yanbing can properly explain that the man is a fake Santong, the man says that he has already gotten what he wanted. Yanbing realizes that his plan was to have Zia's guardian destroy the pagoda tree from the beginning. The man says that Yanbing's world is too small as he reveals that he is not part of the organization. He reveals that the pagoda tree can be repaired but someone would have to visit all the requiem streets to collect parts from other sacred trees to fix it. Yanbing doesn't just want to let him leave but he has lost too much power. All it takes is the sun to rise and Zia's guardian gets free of its curse. Zia approaches her guardian who can't wait to talk to a girl after a thousand years and he tells her that she looks just like someone from his past. He reveals that he no longer has the ability to make the elixir of reviving and had given it to someone long ago. Fake Santong takes his leave the millisecond he hears that. Zia apologizes but Xu and Liang explains that everything worked out in the end because she can go back to living a normal life. She says she doesn't want to go back and has decided to repair the sacred pagoda tree. Zia's guardian introduces himself as Lai Xuan and vows to protect her. That night, Yanbing and Xu and Liang think about the past. In the past, after the death of the actual Yanbing, Xu and Liang beats the ever-living soul out of Lu. Lu's spirit soldiers turn on him in hopes of revenge after seeing how he got beat by Liang and is weak. Yang King shows his unwavering loyalty to his master and pushes himself to protect Lu from all the soldiers. This would prove to be very costly as Yang King begins to disappear because of using all his psychic power. Zhu Chu tells Lu that he was never worthy of having the loyal Yang King as his guardian. Lu begins to lose his sanity after losing his lifelong friend and Chu and Liang denies Lu the easy way out and sends him off to the human world without killing him. Liang wants him to repent for his sins much longer. In the present time, Chu and Liang again recommends him to go with Zia Ling. Unlike him, the current Yanbing is not confined there because of being a spirit and Chu and Liang wants him to explore the world in his place. The next day, Zia laments how she will go to all the Requiem streets on foot and Yanbing comes wearing psychic armor that hides spirit hosts in other Requiem streets. Zia has her armor made and they get ready to leave. Another flashback kicks in where Chu and Liang had waited for seven days straight after his brother's death and then reunited with his spirit by the help of Santal. Santong explains that the ghostum wants Yan Bing to go through training on Death Island so that he could become the general of Rakshasa Street. In present time, Yan Bing gives his brother the symbol of a requiem general even though it's against the rules and proclaims that Xu and Liang is now the general of Rakshasa Street. Yan Bing has a difficult time leaving his brother just as they were young. One last look into the past, Yan Bing had returned from training on Death Island and unlike Xu and Liang, had grown older and taller. Liang then realizes that his wish for Yanbing to become the big brother had come true and they begin plans to bring Rakshasa Street back to its former glory. In the present, after the two brothers finally say goodbye and separate, Hale is somewhere else relieved to have a little more time before his annihilation. On the other side, Zia understands part of the journey forward will be hunting down the man that killed Yan Bing's parents. Yan Bing explains that the criminal has several scars around his lips and was recognized as the mightiest requiem general of the last generation, Huang Fu Longdu. Elsewhere, Fake Santong removes his disguise and reveals the hardest twist that he had always been Longdu the whole time. He meets and prepares for a fight to the death with the escaped Hale. Longdu explains that there will be no fight between them, only execution. He summons a different guardian from before and it takes care of Hale instantly. Longdu expresses how glad he is that Yanbing was able to be so powerful without even realizing his full potential yet. Longdu predicts to his followers that havoc is still coming and many heroes will be forced to the front of the battle. No matter how uncertain the future is though, Longdu promises to see his crush Yanbing again.